But how many companies are we talking here about mainland China that are producing PMR related products? Uh, there are around four to five hundred manufacturers who are making the hardware and software for PMR. Okay, that's done. And with that's done, I actually mean I applied for a visa to go to China. I applied for a visa to go to Beijing. Now on the 14th of August, I received an email from one of my friends in China to come to Beijing. Not just to come to Beijing for fun, to come to Beijing to the second Radio World Conference in China. Mm, but before that is all happening, I had to complete my visa registration. That is a long process. And uh, besides the fact that I wanted to know what I was doing in Somalia and in Israel, uh, a lot of other information I had to share with the Chinese government and the Chinese embassy, and that's over here in The Hague. Okay, so that package is ready to be sent to the Chinese embassy. So yes, I got all my stuff ready. Oh yeah, I just need to tell my wife about this. She will love it. Okay, without any further ado, let's go to China. This indeed looks like the hotel from the picture at bookings.com. Um, this should be the entry here to the hotel, just around the corner. That trip took about one hour. Uh, the taxi driver didn't say one single word. That doesn't matter because he doesn't understand me anyway. He doesn't speak any English. I hope they do speak some English at the hotel. But let me see if I can check in already. It's very early in the morning. They don't expect me to check in so early probably, so I hope there is a bed available for a few hours. Hi, good morning. How are you? I would like to check in, please. Yes, please. Welcome to the China Radio Conference where I'm going to show you the latest development in PMR technology for the Chinese radio communications market. The kickoff's being done by a very important person, right? Yeah, he's the uh, vice chairman and uh, secretary general from the Ministry of Wireless. Okay, yeah. so it's an important person, right? Yes. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this is the room where everything happens. This is the room where the opening ceremony is going to happen. Uh, it's really very quiet right now. We're early, uh, but that's the right time to take the best seats, actually. <laughs> I don't understand anything of this. Every 10 seconds people are clapping. It's a very small step from the conference to the exhibition. This is the exhibition and this is where it all happens. This is where Radio China is having the booth. Together with MCC Resources actually. Both are companies. Uh, while in the meantime, the people from the ministry are looking at uh, the developments on 5G for example. 
Okay, so what did we do from here? Uh, there are some companies you might know from other exhibitions like Critical Communications World, PMR Expo, and there are a lot of other radio companies here that I've never heard of. So the idea is to walk around the exhibition and to see what development is going on right now here in China on PMR. As this is a radio conference, it's all about radio communications. So I'm not sure exactly where to start. I see Linton, I see uh, Narda, uh, L3 Harris as well, by the way, uh, Spirant over there, uh, B Trunk, uh, Xera might be here. I'm not sure about that. Um, so, you know, there's lots to do. It's the start of day number one, and it's the start of a great exhibition. was to organize this event a little bit earlier in the year. Unfortunately, that was not possible. But that means that most of the companies who wanted to be here didn't have any budget anymore, and therefore you don't see the big brands. But there is so much other stuff. So we had Octus telling about their chipsets and why they're making chipsets for one of the largest companies on PMR in the world. We have Kirison with the international expansion, which is very important. They're really taking the next leap into non-Chinese countries, into other countries around the world. Um, we had a meeting set up with Qualcomm, an interview with the VP strategy, I believe, at the top of my head, but that was suddenly cancelled. But instead of that interview, I arranged something different. We're setting up the gear at uh, Linton at the moment. And uh, this is a very small mobile radio, a very tiny, 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 tiny mobile radio. I've never seen a mobile radio like that. And it seems that they have UHF and VHF in one radio. So I'm going to interview this lady over here. How is the exhibition for you guys? Go ahead. The exhibition was uh, excellent to us because we've received a lot of customers from different industries. And we are gaining new information about their true requirement in the future. So this is helping us also to setting up our directions and our roadmaps, especially how to convert our product from narrowband to broadband. Tiger, it's good to meet you here. Tiger yeah, is nice a CEO, you CEO of Kerisun, right? Yes. So Kerisun is well known, um, also in Europe. You yeah. guys are uh, exhibiting on many exhibitions. Yes. We're now here in China. Yeah. Uh, this is an important event for you, right? Yeah. Also, welcome to you. You know, the participate this quite great event here in Beijing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, what kind of products are you guys bringing to the market on this exhibition? Actually, this time, you know, Kerisun uh, bring uh, quite many products, such as you know the POC and also you know professional. Uh, uh, radio uh, for this, uh, you know, the education actually. Okay, and for specific markets? Yeah, it's uh, more focused on the, uh, like emergency and also for energy and also the, for public security. So I'm looking at this 5G project by China Mobile. This is the IoT project. This is the smart city that I have in mind. And for a smart city, you need base stations and you need a lot of base stations, specifically when you talk about Beijing. So in other words, Beijing is getting 80,000 base stations to cover Beijing on 5G. I think that's not enough if you have every 300 meter a base station. But 80,000, that's the right number, right? Yeah. Where will you use that IoT system for? Yeah, well, actually, IoT system is all, uh, for our buildings and uh, a, lot, a, a lot of place anywhere in the future, in the city, even in the countryside. All right, so so how many customers does China Mobile have? 0 0.6 billion customers in China. Almost one third of our population. Wow, 
So are they expecting all 5G to happen? Everyone in China is expecting it. Everyone? Yeah. Okay, when we look at public safety, I see a robot over there. Yeah. That's an interesting thing because you guys are using a robot based on 5G, right? Yeah. Yes. Can I try this robot? Why not? This is the controller. This is a simple game controller. And this is the robot. So I should be able to use that robot to turn the robot and to send this robot into a crowd these are the antennas and this and this over here these are the eyes actually the eyes are recognizing exactly what is happening for example if a child is missing this robot picks it up through software that is recognizing the face of the ch missing child that's just one of the examples where this robot can be used for so this robot can be also controlled through a command and control center and that command and control center sees exactly what you're seeing over here and this is what the robot sees How? so that means that I'm here and there at the same time right? that's easy right? and I think Beijing is the first big city in the world with so many subscribers on 5G there are not many companies from overseas here exhibiting at this exhibition. We saw some, uh, we saw Comscope, L3 Harris, and the other company is Roden Swartz. And uh, this is their booth. Arctis is a company you might not have heard of. Well, that's a special reason for that because they're making chipsets. Chipsets that finally end up in PMR radios and maybe one of the radios that you're using and you're selling. Um, and this is Andy, and Andy is the CEO of Auctus. Um, when we talk about Auctus, what kind of products do you make? Actually,那我包括现在全世界这个占有率最高非常文明的幺八四六啊幺八四六还是就是我们公司的主要产品。One now it's really interesting to see how business is being done here in China. On one hand you have the government, on the other hand you have the manufacturers. And the interesting thing is that the government is explaining to the manufacturers what their roadmap is, instead of the other way around, where the manufacturers are explaining their roadmap in order for the government to purchase the products for the next coming 10 years. Um, I'm not sure exactly what is the right approach. What I do know is that every single approach fits a certain country or fits a certain nation. Um, in China, this might be the best way to go forward. Where in Europe and other places around the world, it's maybe even better that the manufacturers are explaining the roadmap to their customers who then can decide whatever products they want to choose. Um, for me, it doesn't matter. For me, this event was just a great event to experience how critical communications, how PMR and LMR communications is alive here in China. The conference was jam-packed. Manufacturers listening to government people to understand what they have in mind for the next coming years. And here at China Mobile, they know exactly what to do. And if you want to know who's responsible for this whole event, organizing everything from the conference to the exhibition, that's this lady over here. This is Lynn. Hi. And Lynn has been responsible for everything, right? Yes. The big, the big PMR lady in China. Biggest. The biggest lady in PMR in China. No, I'm small.